They're attacking us, sir. Affirmative, Captain. Hey guys, welcome to a Tuesday bonus video. We haven't done one of these in ages. So the idea is to share projects with you that are not substantial enough for a Friday, for our regular Friday video, but still could be of interest to you. So the topic of today is using an Athlon 64 system and turning it into a MS-DOS retro gaming PC. So in terms of expectations, I'm hoping that we will have a system where we can play older speed sensitive DOS titles, but also more modern games in high resolutions and still high frame rates. I do want Sound Blaster sound to work. I want an optical drive to work. I want a mouse, of course, uh, to also work and have some storage. So the idea behind using an Athlon 64 for DOS retro gaming, there are a couple of reasons. The first one is cost. Uh, buying a 386, 486 Pentium in an authentic AT case. Uh, it's not going to be cheap. Prices have gone up. There are collectibles, so to speak. So price is definitely an advantage. The Athlon 64 platform is definitely more for Windows XP. Uh, but in my opinion, it's not quite powerful enough. Even a really high-end decked out Athlon 64 will struggle with some games like uh, Far Cry. Now, we recently did a video showing you using an Athlon 64 with Windows 98, and here the performance is terrific. But what about MS-DOS? So the good news is um, it can be a very basic Athlon 64. It doesn't have to be high-end. In fact, we're using a Sempron 3100 Plus. Another benefit of going with such a modern platform for DOS gaming is that you can use a modern ATX case, modern ATX power supply. You can use larger storages and don't run into any BIOS capacity limitations. You have PS2 as well as USB input options, so uh, there are quite a few benefits, as well as having a low power and uh, quiet system. And yeah, everything for a decent price as well. So we will have a look at some benchmarks, but it's all about the games. So what I did in this video is at the end of the video, I will show you a bit more gameplay footage with the sound at full volume and not me speaking. So that just gives you an idea of, of seeing the games in action. Here are just a few uh, screenshots of the games that I've successfully tested. So we have Doom, Lemmings, Prince of Persia, uh, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, The Secret of Monkey Island 2, Stunts, Wolfenstein 3D, Wing Commander 2, Battle Isle, and The Heart of China. For storage, I'm using an ID optical drive. A lot of DOS games use CD audio, which is important, and a ID hard drive. Now, this is a little bit overkill. It's an 80 gigabyte hard drive. Perfectly fine is detected by the bias. Uh, the reason I use this hard drive is because I used it recently with the same system for Windows 98. Now, with MS-DOS, there are two really decent alternatives. You can get an ID to compact flash or an ID to SD card adapter and then install DOS on these um, CF and SD cards. And the benefit is that you can just eject them and turn off the machine, you pull out the SD card or the CF card and put it in a card reader and then you can load games and it just makes life a little bit easier. And this is the sound card. This is from Terratech, the ESS Solo 1 and this gives us Sound Blaster Pro compatibility under MS-DOS. And the sound quality is good, the compatibility is good. The FM implementation is a version from ESS, so it sounds a little bit different compared to your Yamaha OPL3. In most games, you're not going to be able to tell, but Stunts is a good game where the uh, sound is definitely quite different. So this is a case of how sensitive are you to the FM quality. But the bottom line is um, you will have Sound Blaster sound in pretty much uh, most DOS games and that's really what we are after. So the motherboard I'm using is from Gigabyte. It's the K8VM800M and it has chipsets from VIA. So we have a Northbridge, the K8M800, which has an integrated VIA S3G Unichrome 2 graphics, which uses uh, shared memory. And the Southbridge is also from VIA. It's the 8237R+. I have flashed the latest BIOS, version FD, 
And pro tip with a gigabyte board in the BIOS, press Control F1 to unlock some hidden options. And then I went into the BIOS and I basically turned off anything that we don't need. I turned off the onboard sound, the onboard Ethernet. We don't need the onboard uh, USB and also we don't need the onboard SATA controllers. Getting PCI sound cards to work correctly in MS-DOS can always be a little bit tricky. Out of the box, and I put the sound card in the first PCI slot, that actually matters and we will come to that shortly. So out of the box, the system allocated interrupt 10 to the sound card and that's not very ideal. A lot of games don't even let you choose interrupt 10. But you can go into the bars and there's an option where you can assign the interrupts to the PCI slots. So I figured, well, that's got to be PCI 1. So I went in the bar, set PCI 1 to interrupt 5. But after a reboot, I noticed that interrupt 5 is now allocated to the graphics. So um, maybe just a different way of counting. So I went back to the bars and had a look at the PCI 2 option. I set that to interrupt 5 and then the sound card was an interrupt 5, which is what we want for uh, Sound Blaster Pro compatibility. And now all the games started to work just fine. So in the end, we have a Sound Blaster Pro with the base address at 220, interrupt 5, DMA1, and also a MPU 401 MIDI interface on address 330. And thanks to the VIA Southbridge chipset, the uh, driver initializes the sound card with what's called TDMA. In terms of configuring your startup files, you have to add a few lines to your config and autoexec batch files. I will put the entries onto the screen uh, just in case you want to recreate such a system. So now let's have a look at the performance. We've got the machine running at full speed. So that's the Sampron 3100 Plus running at 1.8 gigahertz and the RAM is running at 200 megahertz. And here we have results for the DOS benchmark pack, which you can download from my website. I will put a link down below in the description. And across the board, we're getting excellent performance with Doom showing the weakest result. That's because Doom just after a certain processor speed, it just doesn't really scale anymore. But even that game cruises along at 116 FPS. The Doom engine, by the way, is capped at 35 FPS. Next, let's have a look at the 640x480 high resolution tests. So here we've got two results. Firstly, out of the box, and then secondly, with the fast vid tool enabled. And you can see how much of a difference fast vid makes. Even Quake now runs at 52 FPS. The other games also run really well. So if you want to play something like System Shock at 640x480 or Duke Nukem 3D, this platform will deliver. And now let's have a look at how slow we can make this machine. This really matters. We don't need high speed. If you get 200 or 150 FPS in some DOS game, it doesn't really matter. But for older games, having a slow system is really important. So there are a couple of things I did. Firstly, I went into the bars and I lowered the CPU multiplier. So the CPU now runs at only uh, 1000 megahertz or one gigahertz. Next, we're using the set mal utility, which can disable the integrated CPU cache inside the processor. That has the biggest speed impact. And then you can also play around with the speed of the RAM. Out of the box, it runs at 200 megahertz, but I lowered it to 100 megahertz, halving the memory throughput. And here we can see the results. So in 3D Bench, Chris's 3D Bench, PC Player Benchmark, and Doom with minimum details. So that's important. That's not Doom running at normal graphics. It's with the smallest window and the low detail option. It gives you the sort of uh, the, the performance of uh, similar to Wolfenstein 3D, uh, 3D yeah. and yeah so looking at that 3D bench running at 72.7 uh, FPS that is basically a 486 DX and that is fantastic that means all the old school uh, adventures will run without having to uh, hack them or find any patches so compatibility with older games should be excellent for Wing Commander 1 it's a little bit too fast but Wing Commander 2 runs fine on this machine. So next up we have some extended game captures where you can take a closer look at how the games run. But the big question is, did I run into any issues? There was one issue I had with Gods. The scrolling is affected. I've seen the same issue on a lot of uh, thin clients from HP, for example, that also use a VIA chipset. Has something to do with the VIA and S3G Unichrome graphics. So what can you do? Well, 
we have an ATP and PCR slots. So what you can do is you can actually get uh, another graphics card. So my recommendations, I really like the ones from Cirrus Logic, excellent value, good compatibility, good performance, or something from S3. So these, these are the two sort of chips that I do recommend for DOS gaming. But there are other options, something more modern like um, like an NVIDIA solution could be a TNT or a TNT2. And of course, if you want a really sharp VGA output, go with a, a video card from Matrox. But yeah, so let's summarize it. Really excited with um, this solution. Compatibility I found to be excellent and um, turning off the caches and slowing everything down, you have yourself a 486 machine and that is fantastic. A lot of old games will run and if you want to play something more demanding with high resolution like System Shock, yep, just enable the CPU cache and you'll have a butter smooth experience. And we still have all the legacy options that we need with the ID ports for your CD-ROM and for your hard drive. It is quite low noise. You can use a modern ATX case, modern ATX power supply, and this should be a lot cheaper than trying to hand down an authentic 386 and 486. And very likely this is gonna also last you a little bit longer. Um, but look, that's something we might know more about in 10 to 20 years. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys. So I'm saying goodbye. Uh, hopefully you found this interesting. If you have any questions or uh, if you want me to look into something like this uh, and maybe a more specific aspect in future videos, do leave the comments down below. And now uh, you can have a look at the game captures uh, in more detail. Thanks for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.
Jones, how are you gonna find that statue and all this junk? Oof! These books don't look familiar. Uh-oh. <clears throat> Better get that roof checked. A cheap copy of a Siamese idol. <coughs> Yow! I'll be. Here's what I've been searching for. Strange looking thing. I wonder where Marcus picked it up. I'm back. Indy? You don't look at all well, Dr. Charles. Exploring our collections can be dangerous, Mr. Uh, what was your name again? Smith. Tell me.
They're attacking us, sir. Affirmative, Captain. Destroyed an enemy fighter. <laughs> <laughs> 